Okay, so yesterday we started looking at and solving equations where we had variables on both sides of the equal sign. And even though that seemed a little different than what we've had before, a little more complex than what we'd done before, we still just had to remember to use inverse operations to get the variables on one side. We had practiced combining like terms earlier in the year, and it really helps us out when we get to this. But when we got to problems where there were fractions, it seemed to throw people. They weren't exactly sure what to do and how the fractions were going to make the problem different or more difficult. Good news is you just have to keep using the inverse operations. 5 eighths times a, 3 fourths times a. We're going to do the same thing as if it were a whole number, a 2 times a and a 4 times a. Okay? We're going to do our use inverse operations to get our variables on one side or the other. So in this case, 5 eighths times a and 3 fourths times a, I, I already have a variable on this side without a constant here. So I'm going to move this 5 eighths times a, I'm going to get it over on this side by using the inverse operations. This 5 eighths, it's a positive number. It's not a negative 5 eighths times a, it's a positive 5 eighths times a. So I'm going to use my inverse operation, which is subtracting. I'm going to subtract 5 eighths a, because I'm doing the inverse operation. And over here, I'm going to subtract 5 eighths a. Now the good news is 5 eighths minus, a, minus 5 eighths a, that's just 0. And I'm going to bring my 6 right down here, and my equal sign. But now, 3 fourths a minus 5 eighths a, I know how to do that but it's going to take a little bit more work. So I'm going to come over here to do my, my subtraction. I'm going to go 3 fourths minus 5 eighths. And I'm going to have to find a common denominator. Now the good news is 8 is a multiple of 4. So it makes finding my common denominator really easy. I'm just going to multiply the top times 2 and the bottom times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, 6 eighths minus 5 eighths. 6 eighths minus 5 eighths equals 1 eighth. So I have 1 eighth a. Okay. I'm going to circle this so we, don't, we know that we're done with this part. Now we're working on this right here. Now, 1 eighth times a. What's my inverse operation here? If I'm going 1 eighth times a. Division. It's going to be division. Good news is we know how to divide by fractions. Okay? So I'm going to divide this one by 1 eighth. And I know they're going to cross each other out and I have a down here. Now I'm going to go 6 divided by 1 eighth. So I'm going to come right over here again. Because then as a fraction, they want more room to work it out. 6 divided by 1 eighth. What should I do first on this? You can tell me what I should do first. Put 1 under 6. Yeah, I'm going to turn 6. I'm going to make it a fraction. 6 over 1. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? How do I divide two fractions? Um, find the reciprocal of um, 1 over 8. Yeah, take the, find the reciprocal of the second one, which is 1 over 8. I like to use that word reciprocal. Good job. And when we take the reciprocal, we basically flip the numerator and the denominator. So it's 6 over 1 and 8 over 1. What happens to this division sign when I come over here? What happens to it? It becomes, it becomes a multiplication sign. 6 times 8 is 48. 1 times 1 is just 1. 48 over 1 is just 48. So when I divide 6 divided by 1 eighth, it equals 48. So A equals 48. Now, the problem is a little more involved because I have to find Subtracting fractions and dividing fractions has a few more steps to it. But even though there's fractions in there, I still do the same thing. 
I use inverse operations to get my variable to one side and then solve for that variable.